Greetings YouTubers. Got a uh, request from some of our students to start doing some video series to kind of talk to them about a little bit about some of the firearms that we talk about in our classes, as well as talk about some breakdown issues, uh, well not issues, but talk about breaking down the firearms. Here we have two examples of a 1911. For all you 1911 uh, advocates out there, you big, big hardcore 1911 fans out there, don't get mad at me for doing everything on a Glock, Matt, okay? Um, before we do anything else, okay, one of the first things you want to do before working on any firearm is you want to make sure that your area is good and clean. You want a nice area to be working in. You don't want to be doing this at your kitchen table because some of the chemicals and things, you don't want to be inhaling that and eating it later on. So first of all, we are going to clear these firearms. And we do that by racking the slides back and visually inspecting. Some people say stick your finger in there, but I say don't do that. That's a good way to get your finger bit and it will hurt and possibly even break your finger. Um, but just a visual inspection is good. Make sure the magazine is empty. There are no live rounds in this particular vicinity. We'll do the same thing with this one since we are handling these two firearms. Visually clear, okay. All right, good to go. Now, the differences between these two firearms here that I have in front of me, this is a traditional 1911, okay? It is a, um, this particular one is a, a uh, combat model, it's a SIG, which means it has a uh, accessory rail here, which the original ones don't. Uh, this one also is all stainless steel and a steel frame. This one is very light because even though the slide is steel, the frame is made of aluminum, very lightweight. Uh, almost equivalent to a lot of the polymer uh, guns in the way that it feels. And that's so that you can carry it concealed, and that's why it's designed that way. In fact, it is called the Compact uh, by Springfield Armory, and, and one of my uh, students actually had this and on the range when we were um, doing one of the classes, and th that's where the result of this video actually came from, was to tear this down. Uh, this particular one's not his. This actually belongs to me. The major difference is, if you look at the top of these two, okay, this is a bushingless design, and this is a bushing design. The original Colt uh, had a bushing. Some of the later models have a bushingless design. Either one is fine. Some of the purists prefer the, the bushing. I personally do not like the bushing because it, that means that I can't tear it down in the field in a true field strip. It's more like a bench strip uh, because you require a, a, a bushing uh, wrench to actually get it off. Now, bushing wrench looks like this. This is a Wilson Combat bushing wrench, but you just kind of poke it down right on top of there and, and it allows you to turn the bushing very easily without having to you know, put, exert a whole lot of force. Some of them are light enough to do with your fingers, but I haven't found one yet um, that you can actually do that with. So um, the other difference is in these two particular, this is a traditional model. You can look right here at this portion of it, this little round thing right here. This is actually the extractor pin and it is an internal extractor pin. The SIG decided to go a different way. They put the extractor on the outside of the slide. Now in some models that has proven to be a faulty design. SIG actually managed to pull it off. I don't know if it has anything to do with the squared off uh, 1911 top frame, but they actually managed to pull it off and pull it off quite well. So I've had no, no problems with that. And we're going to put that off to the side because we're, we're done with that at the moment. Okay, so let's start the disassembly by field stripping it. The first thing we want to do to field strip it, of course, is rack it back, make sure it's clean, okay, and then slowly pull it back. And on the back side right here, this little button. It's actually the, uh, the opposite end of the slide release lever, but it's also the pin that actually holds the barrel lug in place. So we're gonna kinda pull that forward. There's a little registry mark right there and push. And what that does is it allows that slide pin to actually come out of the slide like that. And then you can pull that all the way out and set that off to the side. Now that will allow you can look right through there and see that uh, the barrel lug, okay? That allows the slide to come right off, okay? This particular model has a full-length guide rod, which is uncommon, 
The full version does not, and the original version does not, and this one did not come with it. I actually put this on here. This is a two-piece guide rod, so you actually have to take this guide rod down, okay? Now the traditional one will look like that, so your spring will blow up, and you just fling that across the room. No problem. Okay, so we got our guide rod, and we have our, put that back together. And if yours doesn't have this, don't freak out. Um, it's not a big deal. The round part of the, smooth part of the spring needs to go up against that, and the plunger part, the uh, hard end of the spring, goes towards the frame, or towards the front of the barrel, the muzzle. Okay, then you just rotate that little lug forward after you pull out the bushing, okay? <laughs> I always forget that the bushingless, mo the bushingless models have this little catch up front here that holds the spring, and you need to slide that out. In the bushingless models, or the bushing models, you don't have to do that. Um, so it kind of gets me every time I take this gun apart. So then you just pull that barrel out like that. And now you have the gun in its complete field strip. And that is what you would do to clean it. We're going to take this down even further. Okay, Your slide has a few extra components to it. And that is the firing pin and the um, extractor. Okay. What we're going to do to take this out, you're going to take a small punch about the size of the firing pin. Push down on the firing pin, but make sure you keep your finger over this. When you slide, you just push the, the panel out. You can see there how it's kind of slide, starting to slide off of there. Keep your thumb over that because when you slide this out, that firing pin is going to want to shoot up because it's under spring tension, and it just did. Okay, and I'll just let it go there nice and soft. This is your firing pin retention plate, okay? This rounded part goes on the bottom. The little notch right there lines up with this notch inside the slide, and it slides in there and just retains the firing pin. That is part of the original Browning design. Put that off to the side. Here's your firing pin. Looks like that. That is also part of your original Browning design. That hasn't changed much in well over 100 years. Now your firing pin spring should slide right on out. Okay, put that off to the side. Your extractor, you need to take your punch and just kind of pull up gently. It should slide right out, just like that. And there's your extractor, okay? I'll put that back in there so that you can see what it looks like on the inside. You should know that's that piece right there. It's a little piece of sprung steel, okay? And you can also push it from this side, I guess. Okay, and pull it out. This part lays inside of here like that, and it gives it just enough spring tension. That, that little gap right there between is enough to give it enough springiness to grab. And what it does is it comes out when it, when it launches that round into the chamber, okay, and actually launches that, that round into the chamber there. This thing comes forward and grabs it. So when the slide comes back, it pulls that shell out. And then the extractor, which is right there built into the frame, pushes it out like that. And that's how that mechanism actually functions. Original Browning design. Okay, our slide is now completely disassembled. Now, to disassemble our frame. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these grips off of here. And I'm not going to make you watch this whole process with me doing it. So I'm going to take the first one out just to show you. So you just want to unscrew that. You might have uh, Allen screws like this, so you may need an Allen wrench, depending on how you do it. Do the magic of editing, television, video, whatever, we got them off. So there's our, there's our grips. All right, so now your slide, just this very light little piece of aluminum. Well, this one is. Yours may be steel, probably is steel. You can unscrew these. You just take a little slot, screwdriver, and turn it. Now, these are locked tight in there, and I don't have any real reason to take them out, so I'm not going to, but you can do that. They do come out. They are just screwed in, okay? Next thing we want to do is we want to remove the... Um, grip safety. Now to do that, I'm sorry, the thumb safety. That is going to help us disassemble the rest of this. So with this hammer pulled back, so cock that back. On the right side here, right here, you'll see a little pin. You're just going to push that. You're going to lift it up on this side, 
push it through and as you do push it down on this side push it down as you push and it should you may have to wiggle it a little bit but it should just come right out now you're going to want to keep your hand on this grip to keep the back piece there you go and it just slides right out of there like that we'll set that off to the side now i'm going to come over here and i'm going to grab this and i want to roll that hammer forward don't ever let it fly forward especially in an aluminum frame because it will crack the frame and bend it up in fact um, this one has actually been done that you can see that accidentally and it'll actually mess the frame up okay go ahead and grab this with your hands like that and then you want to take another punch and down here you're going to see another little hole another little pin on one side it's got an indention on the other side it is uh, rounded off okay that is by design you want to take this side everything's going to be done from the left side of the gun here and you're going to want to push that pin out of there now sometimes you can do it with just one push like i did and sometimes you can't you may need to tap it a little bit it's got a little indention in it like that so pay attention to that that indention's uh, important because it matches up with another pin okay now we can slide the spring assembly off the back of the gun it comes right off just like that okay and there's the hole and the, the um, connector rod the extension rod for the hammer rides right down there and just pushes that spring down and compresses it and that's what gives it the ability to ride the hammer forward okay we're just going to slide that off to the side now our grip safety should come right out and it does and there's our grip safety we'll put that off to the side now you should get a very good view of the sear spring except that was kind of sprung up there this is the sear spring okay pretty interesting little design just a piece of flat metal okay there's a registration mark little slide and slot right here that it, that it sits in this right spring is for the grip safety it actually is what gives the grip safety its spring this middle spring right here is for the release of the grip safety what's what the grip the the sear up here is pushing against this one is also attached to the sear and the hammer extender right here this rod kind of rods down and pushes down on this spring that we we showed you in here before now we're just going to take that spring out just lift it out of there okay it's a pretty nifty little design okay original browning design that's the sear spring okay now we can pull our hammer out there's a pin right here it's right there and it's flat on the other side and it should just push right out Okay, very lightly, should be no tension to it at all because it just holds the hammer in place when we pull the hammer out. Now you can actually disassemble the hammer itself from this, but I'm not going to at this point, but all you gotta do is push that little pin out right there if you really wanted to. Um, it's kind of pressed in there really nicely and I don't wanna have to uh, pull it out at this point. Um, but you can replace this part, all these parts are replaceable, so they were designed that way. Inside of here, you should now be able to see the sear. Now I want to show you something kind of interesting. Get it close enough so you can see here. That's the sear. Watch what happens when I pull that trigger. You see the trigger push up on the sear? That is because these little notches right here are what grabs. Click, click. And when you push that back, that pushes the sear up so that the hammer can fall forward. That spring tension pushes the hammer up. Pop. That's how it works. Okay. We need to remove that. So there's a little pin right here. And just push it out, it should be really light. Okay, now the sear is kind of a difficult thing to get in there if you're not careful. And we'll just push that little pin out like that. Put it off to the side. Now our sear should pop out. You should see this pop drop part right here on the top of the frame. Drop out, that's our connector. Right there, pull the connector out. And here's the sear. There we go. I'll just dump that out into my hand. Okay. Now there's the frame. Put the frame down. Here's your connector. Okay. And here's the sear. And they fit together like this. Okay. And when the hammer, I showed you before, when the hammer rides up, you see how it kind of slides in there? When the hammer rides up, you get that little half cock right there. 
okay that's your little half cock and then it comes all the way forward and rides up click and holds that in place just like that and when this presses down and that grip safety presses down it releases and when you pull that trigger the trigger pushes back on this part right here and the sear gets released and the hammer the spring tension it can then roll forward click and it hits the firing pin that's how the whole mechanism works okay there's your connector and there's your sear put those off to the side okay now the only thing left to take out is the trigger but to do that we have to actually take out the uh, magazine safety catch or the magazine catch we call everything a safety these days you're going to need a very small screwdriver flat hit most of the time and you're going to want to put it in that little slot you're going to push the um, safety I mean push the magazine catch with your left hand and turn that just enough to where it pops right out and it should just slide right on out just like that okay you can see how that mechanism works when you put that screwdriver in there there's a little lug that catches it you see that lug and it grabs hold of it and that's what holds it in place and the way this works is when the magazine when this is in the in the grip and the magazine comes up in here see that little notch right there it goes click and it grabs it so when you push on this it actually releases that and allows the magazine to fall down and that's how that works now your trigger should just slide right around so just push it right on out and lift it up with your finger and there's your trigger it's a weird looking trigger isn't it notice the shape okay it's got a half moon and you see that, that, that circle in the middle? It's a little hard to tell if you don't have a, a hollowed out trigger like this one. Um, but it, this part is a little bit longer here than it is there. And this thing is shaped like that. This trigger will only go in one way. So, yes, I could take the trigger out of this and replace them. They are interchangeable. The triggers, regardless of the model, typically are all the same. Um, and that's put that off to the side. And there you have it. We can actually take these things out, but we're not going to because they're kind of a pain in the butt to get in and out. There's little pins in here that you have to pull out, but I'm not going to worry about that. But just know that you can take them out by removing these pins in here as you push on them. And that will allow the uh, retention uh, pieces to come out. That's the little piece right here that kind of clicks in place when you do that or the slide release whatever. and there you have the, the 1911 uh, Colt original Browning design 1911 all disassembled and all you needed was a little punch and a little flathead screwdriver <laughs> alright to put this back together you take your trigger and you slide it right in there it will only go in one way look at there if I put it in upside down it won't go in all the way so it'll only go in one way Take your trigger. Uh, this other one I have, if I take that apart to show you, it's actually adjustable. So some triggers may have an adjustment on it. And I wish I did take that apart because then I could show you that. But it's basically um, two parts in here and they kind of ride. And that adjustment screw gives you the ability to uh, adjust the amount of pressure needed to uh, squeeze the trigger. So we put the trigger in first. And then to hold the trigger in place, we're going to actually put the um, magazine catch in here okay that, that'll actually keep the trigger from coming out so we take that magazine catch and we hold it up like this as we twist and it should pop right down and it does and that, that will let the spring uh, do its thing huh, do the spring do its thing and then that button should work we're going to just go ahead and test that you always want to test parts as you kind of go through and it does holds that in place and, and releases it let's check a different magazine it holds that in place if it catches that went all the way up there we go it catches and it releases very good all right next thing we got to do is we got to put our sear and our connector together okay and this is our sear and the, the curvy part goes up like that a little part down here at the bottom uh, and this part is our connector and the flat part with the hook side goes down and the pointy part goes up and it's got a, like a square hole right there and as you can see it's got a little bit of a curve to it that curve matches up with the sear curve and they fit together like this you take the sear and the connector and you put them together like that 
okay so that the connector and the sear at the bottom can fit flush like that if you can see that close up view for you you can see how they fit together there's the sear and there's the connector get my fat fingers out of the way and they slide together just like that lock in place now it's kind of tricky to get these in here so you kind of have to finagle them a little bit so you kind of want you may want to put your connector in first you can do that and your connector just slides right in the the uh, there's a hole right at the top you gotta be careful because it gets caught up there it is okay now that connector slides right on up there and you see how it kind of pops up through the top right there you can see that there we go so now I take the sear and I'll just lay the sear in on top of it holding my finger up there and they should glide together nicely and it should slide right in place okay now here comes the tricky part you got to take this sear pin which is the little thin one without the notch in it and you take the sear pin and you push it right on through but you got to kind of play with the sear a little bit you can move the, use the trigger to play with it a little bit to get it to go in. There it is, and it slides right in. So you just kind of take your finger and kind of jiggle that a little bit, and that gets the hole lined up so that you can push the pin through there. Now our sear's in place, okay, and the connector, or disconnector, rather. Okay, and with our sear in place, now we can go ahead and put our trigger assembly back in. I mean our uh, hammer assembly back in. So we take our hammer and we slide it right up there like that and it should go right into that little hole. And we take our hammer pin, remember the flat side of the hammer pin is on the left and the rounded side is on the right. So you put it in rounded side first and this should be flush. You shouldn't even be able to see it there. See how nice and smooth and flush that is? That's because this guy's got to sit there, remember that. Okay, so we let our hammer fall forward and we lift up our connection, our extension rod, some call it extension rod, connecting rod, trigger rod, it's just a rod, okay? And then we're gonna put our sear spring in. And we wanna make sure that our sear is down, like that, up against our connector. And we're gonna take the sear spring, and the sear needs to, spring needs to lay right on top of the sear, like that, and fall in this little groove down at the bottom. And then you can throw your hammer See how the sear lifted up and held it in place? So we gotta make sure that that sear goes down. There we go. Okay, and that hammer needs to stay forward and this part lays on top of that spring. If it's underneath the spring, it will not work. And you'll get it in there and you might get it bound up and then you are gonna have to take it to a gunsmith and probably replace some parts. So be sure you make sure that that's, that's the case. Okay, now comes the fun part. This, when you push on this spring right here, it's gonna wanna twist so you're gonna to have to put your finger in here like this and hold that sear spring down long enough. There's a groove right back here. And you want this groove and this notch to go right down inside of there and the spring's gonna lay inside of this groove. So you just kind of lay it over top of it and let it fall into place like that. And the trigger rod will be right in the middle. See, that's lined up and the tension is already there. So we're gonna take our fingers and we're gonna hold it down like that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap my thumb around it and get a good grip on it so that I can see this rod right here. You need something thin to get under that rod like that because when you push this in here, it's not gonna to wanna to line up. So we'll take our spring group and we'll slide it all the way up there on top of the spring until we get to that point, then kind of lift up on it and get it inside of that little catch. Now it should be in there and you should see the tension on it. We'll take that notched pin, groove side, or the uh, hole side goes on the left, the rounded side on the right, and slide it right back into this part. Now some, this may be tricky. You just kind of compress the spring and push in the pin. All right. I grab the frame like that and do it. And you should be able to push it in with a little bit of hand tension. And if you put your hand on it like that, you can take a screwdriver or something and kind of punch it into place. That's steel and aluminum, so you're not going to hurt it. 
but be careful if you got a, 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 a nice finish on there, you don't want to mar it up. So use something appropriately. Um, so now that's in place and the spring's in place. Now we can pretty much let go of this because the only thing we need to do at this point is you're gonna have to cock the hammer back, hold the, hold the spring back, the um, grip safety back, and cock the hammer back. You should hear the clicks. And there it is, and it works. If it doesn't do that, you need to take the part and try it again because you didn't do something right. So holding that in place, you're gonna stick the safety back in its hole. Now it'll stay all by itself. Now you just push it all the way in Okay, you may need to play with it a little bit to get it there. And this little indention needs to be pushed up. You can barely see that, but this little guy right here needs to be pushed so that it will slide in place. And that's it. And now, it does its thing. Okay, so with the safety on, you shouldn't be able to pull the trigger. And even with that grip, it shouldn't work. You push that safety down, and it shouldn't work. That's good and then you hold the grip. Now you don't want this to fly, so we're just gonna squeeze it and let it and hold it. And there it goes, it works. And it should click. There's the half cock, and there's the full cock. All right, good to go. The frame is now almost completely put back together. The only thing left to do, of course, is to put your grips back on, which we will do by just putting those screws in there. All right, grips back on, our frame is complete. Now we can take our slide and put it back together. Remember our pin right here. So we'll take our extractor, slide it right back into that little groove and just slide it right down in there. It should only go in one way. It should be nice and smooth and registered. You may need to take a pin and kind of Make that groove right there line up so that you can get your slide plate in, your firing pin retention plate. Put your firing pin spring in and then your firing pin. They should bounce together like that. Take the retention plate. Now remember what I said, this groove right here, this groove right there on that slide needs to line up with the groove right here on this retention plate. So you take the, the, the retention plate, remember the rounded side, and by rounded I mean curved down like that where the groove is. So the grooved side uh, faces out like this. And, and then take your thumb, hold it in place. Take your punch, push your firing pin down like so until you can kind of slide that into place. Okay, you may have to play with your, there you go. Just push it until you get it and then click. Your firing pin slides right up. And I'm gonna show you that firing pin in action. If you look right there, you can see the firing pin actually coming out right there. Okay, that's how that works. That hammer comes up, strikes that, and inertia alone with the power of the hammer hitting it actually causes that to go forward just enough to hit the primer and then it resets uh, before the gas action takes over and causes the recoil. All right, we put our barrel back in like that. Lift our barrel lug up. In this case, it's not a bushing model, so we're gonna have to put the spring retainer in and then push our guide rod in. This is a full length version, remember that. So you may not have one like that, so it shouldn't be this difficult to push in there like that. Remember that curve goes flat against, goes around the barrel like that. So it should sit in there nicely. Take this. If you have a full size version that doesn't have a full length guide rod, you're going to want to do this upside down so that that, um, well, you actually won't put the spring in first to do that. Um, see the video on field strip and a bushing model. Uh, you'll slide this in place like this. Put your barrel retention rod in or your slide stop in and that needs to line up with that little registry mark right there and just push it into place and now it should be right there test fire it should work nice test our safety should work test our grip safety should work test our grip safety without the thumb safety should work 
and it fires. So that's good. Now I always recommend that you take some dummy rounds. Don't ever do this with live ammunition. Take some dummy rounds. Um, these are something I use for training. If you've been to one of my classes, you've seen these. These are ST Action Pros. You can pick them up fairly inexpensively. I think a pack of five will cost you about five or ten dollars, something like that. Um, push them down here into your magazine and test the action and make sure that everything lines up appropriately. Remember, finger off the trigger, point in a safe direction always, even if they are dummy rounds. Those are the rules, and those are for safety. Test that, works. Oh, we got a bit of a jam there. There. So the action actually works really well. So we know that that extractor works. Uh, we can't really tell if the firing pin is going to actually do anything with the uh, primers because we don't have any live rounds and we're not going to do that here in the video. But I will take it to the range and test it. And it works very well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the automatic Colt pistol and the complete disassembly. I hope it's been useful for you. And we'll do other videos here shortly on various different models.